morning everyone welcome back to another video if you don't know me my name's mark i lease this bmw i3s i own a porsche cayman and my channel mark cup 70 is all about the drive day 152 and 3800 miles in this quirky little thing now a couple of things in today's video the first is going to be to cover off what i learned from my last one which was where i put a camera on the back and monitored when the brake lights triggered in the regenerative braking phase and the second thing will hopefully clear up some confusion on what regenerative braking does before i get started if you're new here please consider subscribing that really is a great help give the video a thumbs up if you like this and make sure you stick around to the end when i've got a tip which i guarantee will increase the range of your ev i'm an accountant by trade but an engineer at heart i like understanding how things go on this is where my youtube presence came from putting videos of me driving on track up on YouTube, looking for feedback, looking at what made a good lap good and what could I learn from that to make sure I did it over and over again. Hence the desire to analyse everything and the reason for my last video. I filmed last week in 60 frames a second, so quite accurate in terms of getting the uh, trigger points synchronised and lined up. I captured 24 braking events in all four modes and what I found was that in um, Eco Pro Plus, Eco Pro and Comfort, it triggers the brake lights two to three blocks down from the midpoint. In sport mode though, it was triggering it one block down. However, when I was driving in sport mode, I was hooning it a bit um, and I was a bit more abrupt off the throttle. And I think that's just potentially some lag in the display in that it you know, reacts behind what you do with your foot. It takes a bit of time to catch up. I take my foot right off the throttle really quickly. The gauge hasn't dropped down yet. <laughs> Let's go back to basics and basic physics. Now I'm not qualified in this area. This to me is just common sense really. But when you put petrol or gasoline in the fuel tank of a combustion engine car, you're filling it with energy. Same as when you charge a uh, EV up, you're filling it with energy, and then you convert that energy into forward motion, kinetic energy, the movement of the mass down the road at speed. And when you have a surplus of kinetic energy and you need to lose some of it, you need to slow down. In a combustion engine car, you use the friction brakes and it takes that energy that could have potentially let the car roll for another half a mile, maybe even a mile, depending upon what speed you're doing. It takes that energy and it converts it into heat. And brake regeneration turns that energy back into charge that goes back into the battery but you suffer losses in that. Think about uh, on a rolling road, dyno losses, drivetrain losses, you have power at the flywheel, you have power at the wheels, you suffer losses in energy translation. Kinetic energy back into charge, into the battery, you suffer losses there. So the excess that you spent building up that kinetic energy, you don't get it all back, you're losing range. So my top tip to increase the range of your EV also applies to combustion engine cars. And if you haven't gathered it already, it is simply don't brake. What do you mean don't brake? How can you not brake? Well, only spend as much fuel as you need, only spend as much energy as you need to get you to the point that you want to be. If there's a queue of cars ahead and they're stationary, only spend enough to coast up to the back end of that queue of cars at the point that that queue of cars starts moving. You're not wasting any then. You're not losing any in translation through regen back into the battery and in a combustion engine car. You're not losing any by turning that energy into heat. You're allowing that energy to take the car as far forward as possible. So read the road, read the traffic situation, read ahead, plan for it, do that, and I guarantee you will see more range out of your combustion engine car or your EV. Now I'd like to hear from you. What do you think? Have I got it right? Am I completely wrong? Uh, is there a study somewhere that proves one thing one way or another? If there is, please let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. As mentioned, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And thank you so much for watching.